Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome today's Mistress of Ceremonies, Alexandra Velosh. Good morning. I'm Alex Villock, co-chair of One Community, One Goal, and past chair of the Beacon Council, Miami-Dade County's Economic Development Agency, as well as senior vice president of advertising and marketing for the Miami Herald Media Company. And I'm honored to be your master of ceremonies this morning. Let's start by giving a great round of applause to the members of the World Music Five who have been entertaining us this morning. elected officials, distinguished guests, and community residents. Thank you for attending the 2012 State of the County Address. It is my pleasure this morning to introduce you not only to an impressive lineup of participants, but to our keynote speaker, Miami-Dade County Mayor Carlos Jimenez. Before we begin, I could tell you that I am here today because at my parents' house, our mayor is known simply as Carlitos because they've known him since birth. Or, as my dad reminds me, it was the mayor's grandfather that taught him how to fish. But that's not why I'm here today. Why I'm here today is because right after our mayor was elected, he reached out and asked, what can I do to support the One Community, One Goal effort? Last year, the Beacon Council and its leadership undertook the updating of One Community, One Goal. One Community, One Goal is a targeted industry study focused on one single thing, jobs. What jobs will the future bring? What skills will be required? How can our community prepare itself for those jobs? How can we retain the businesses that are here? And how can we attract new businesses and bring new jobs to Miami-Dade? This initiative is funded by the generous support of Wells Fargo, the Knight Foundation, as well as the Beacon Council and many other organizations. And it has broad participation and input from across our entire community. Every one of our educational institutions is engaged in this process as well. Mayor Jimenez immediately jumped in and became one of our co-chairs of this initiative because he clearly sees the very important and key role that leadership from the public sector can bring to job creation. Now, please rise for the presentation of colors by the Miami-Dade Combined Honor Guard and remain standing for the national anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance by Claudia Lopez and the invocation by Dr. James Bush, Associate Minister at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church of Brownsville. The Miami-Dade Combined Honor Guard presentation of the colors. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket clear, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. James Bush, who will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past and our hope for years to come, we come at this designated place once again to hear the state of the county address by Mayor Carlos Jimenez. And I pray now as he comes to present his message, as, as he present his report and his vision for this county, we pray that you would open up our hearts and let our minds be receptive of what he has to say to us today. And I pray now as he continues to attempt to carry out his mission as the mayor of this county, that you will continue to grant him your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding. We thank you now for his administration. We pray now for his wife. And we thank you for his bold leadership. We thank you for his ability to make tough decisions. We thank you for his commitment to helping to make this county a better place in which to live. Now, as he come, we ask now for a special blessing to bless him in a mighty way. And we thank you in advance for this blessing. And this is your servant prayer. We pray once again. And thank you. Please remain standing while the Honor Guard retires the color. Re Honor Guard, please retire the colors. Right, straight. Forward, mark, left, 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 left. Thank you. Please be seated. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, a man who has shown his love of this community with a lifetime of public service. He's leading our community with transparency, dignity, respect, and integrity. The Honorable Mayor of Miami-Dade County, Carlos Jimenez. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Muy buenos días a todos y bienvenidos. Bonjour et bienvenue. Thank you, Alex, for that uh, kind introduction. I'm honored that 
all of you are joining me today for my first State of the County address. Rather than focusing just on the State of the County government, I'm going to focus on the State of our entire community. Please join me in welcoming the members of the Board of County Commissioners who are with us today. Commissioners, please stand up and be recognized for your commitment and dedication to our community. Please also join me in welcoming uh, my wife, Lourdes, and our growing family. Lourdes and I will be celebrating our 37th wedding anniversary uh, this June. We're right over there. <laughs> Lourdes, stand up so they can see uh, Alexis, uh, my, our granddaughter, and we're very proud of her, okay? <laughs> And all our grandchildren, and uh, we have three, and we have uh, one more coming. Uh, fourth is coming in, uh, in April. Uh, and my daughter-in-law is here, and uh, uh, don't deliver too soon, though, before the speech, okay? All right. <laughs> my family is my rock and my foundation. They've given me encouragement and support every step of the way, and I love them. Mi familia es mi apoyo y mi fuerza moral. Lo quiero con toda mi vida. I also want to acknowledge the distinguished mayors, school board members, and other elected officials from across Miami-Dade who are here today, as well as the members of our, consular, of our Foreign Consular Corps and members of the judiciary. And welcome and thank you to our community, religious, and business leaders as well. You are the job creators and the caregivers, the backbone of Miami-Dade County. I also want to thank, personally thank uh, our MC this morning, Alice Vilosh. Alice has been an active member of our community for many years in business, civic, and charitable efforts. Thank you, Alex. Thanks to Dr. James Bush as well, who delivered our invocation this morning. And of course, thanks to the music ensemble from the Miami-Dade College School of Music led by Dr. Eduardo Calle. They are the World Music Five. And thanks to Claudia Lopez, who sang our national anthem. They represent the amazing talent we have in our community, and they also represent our community's future. I thought they were awesome. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> Without a doubt, the past few years have been challenging for all of us who live in Miami-Dade County. That's especially true for our elderly and special needs residents. But I am convinced that better days lie ahead for all of us. When you elected me a short, uh, months, a short months ago as your mayor, it was with a clear mandate. Change the direction of Miami-Dade County and Miami-Dade County government. The backlash that prompted last year's shakeup of County Hall was a surprise to no one. In the midst of a challenging economy, job losses, shrinking household incomes, and foreclosures, we were saddled with higher property taxes. So just days after taking office, I proposed to slash taxes, rolling back the 2010 tax increase, all the while preserving essential services. And I'd like to thank you, commissioners, for supporting the tax cut. As you know, this was no easy task. Cutting taxes and balancing the budget required tough decisions. Cortando los impuestos y balanceando el presupuesto no ha sido fácil. We cut the size of government while protecting public safety and vital programs for our neediest residents, children and the elderly. Especially protecting elderly meals, which often provide the only warm meal of the day for the members of our greatest generation. Protegiendo las comidas para las personas de tercera edad ha sido mi prioridad. Muchas veces estos servicios representan la única comida caliente para miembros de esta gran generación. We also called on county employees to make a shared sacrifice, and I'm proud to say that they have done their part. 
Leading by example, on day one, I slashed my salary in half, and I cut over a million dollars from my budget. Those employees under my purview also took pay cuts beginning in July. We negotiated new contracts with our 10 labor unions as well. And I commend those members of the County Commission who supported the concessions needed to balance the budget instead of laying off hundreds of public safety officers and employees. On behalf of the families of those employees, I thank you. <laughs> Why was this so important to us? Because we need to acknowledge that we are part of this community and that government is here to serve the people of Miami-Dade County, not the other way around. As your mayor, we will continue to improve on what we do and how we do it. I am proud of the a dedicated group of professionals who have answered the call to serve our community. Please join, join me in giving them a well-deserved round of applause. As you've seen, I have begun the process of shaking up the county bureaucracy, starting by slashing the number of county departments from 42 to 26. For too long, this organization has been growing bigger, more complex, and more expensive to operate. We've had to foot a growing bill, and in return, we've been given a maze of government red tape. That is ending. We are now well on our way to delivering a county government that we can afford. I made it clear from the start, this process won't happen overnight. But as we move into 2012, you will see the savings associated with this reorganization. Commissioners, in the coming weeks, my administration will be briefing each and every one of you on the reorganization. This reorganization will save the people of Miami-Dade County over $30 million this year, and will save them in excess of $40 million next year. But controlling costs is only one of my priorities. Allow me to make one point very clear. This year, 2012, my top priority is job creation. La creación de nuevos empleos en nuestra comunidad es mi prioridad. My plan is to attract new investment and create high paying, quality jobs. And how are we going to do this? We're going to do it with a reorganized county government, starting with an expedited permitting process, eliminating outdated re regulations, a streamlined, customer-friendly organization, and less red tape. In fact, I've invited all of our city leaders uh, to meet on March 7th to get their cooperation and how we can better attract jobs and cut that red tape throughout the community. I'm sure that you would agree if you could go to just one place and get your permits, life would be a, be a heck of a lot easier. And I'm convinced that these changes will make it easier for the job creators to create jobs. Small business owners in our community constantly remind me that government doesn't create jobs. By taking these concrete steps, we can help create the conditions for job growth and restore economic prosperity to our community. As I've said, we're working now to resolve the problems that limit job growth. But going forward, to, kind, to have the kind of economically viable community that we all want, we are partnering with our friends in business and education. That's why I co-chair, along with Alex Vilock and Adolfo Enriquez, the One Community, One Goal initiative. It's a roadmap for our future economic growth. Earlier this month, we joined our economic partners at the Beacon Council to announce targeted industries that have the highest potential for job creation and new investment in our community. Some are familiar, others are not. And they include life sciences and healthcare, information technology, international banking and finance, creative design, hospitality and tourism, aviation, and trade and logistics. Education is the foundation for all of these targeted industries. 
So in the coming weeks, we will issue a report on the state of our educational institutions. And in May, we will unveil our job growth game plan. And while Miami-Dade County has a strong list of targeted industries to create jobs and new investment in our community, everyone knows they're also being targeted by an industry. Destination resort gaming has been a hot topic in our community for the past several months. And regardless of what may or may not be decided in Tallahassee, my position is clear. I believe that the people, not politicians, have the right to decide. All too often, community-altering decisions have bypassed the people and have been left to the select few. I'm committed to fighting for the people's right to decide what is best for their community. <laughs> Going back to our focus on job creation, there are already reasons for cautious optimism on the jobs front. Consider this. Non-agricultural employment has grown in Miami-Dade County by over 18,000 jobs in the past, past year. We also saw the second largest monthly job increase in the state of Florida this past December. And unemployment numbers are now well below their peak of 14%. Job creation is not where it needs to be yet, but we are moving in the right direction. And here's some specific reasons for optimism. Vice Chairman Audrey Edmondson's leadership has helped ensure that the UM Life Science and Technology Park is thriving amidst a growing health care district. And hats off to President Donna Shalala, the University Board of Trans Trustees, and its chairman, Leonard Abbas, for possessing the vision and leadership to push this project from concept to reality. It's also important to mention that Carlos Migoya and the Financial Recovery Board are leading Jackson Memorial Hospital back onto a sustainable path. The difficult choices that are being made at Jackson now will ensure the future viability of our public hospital. And there's no greater champion for the world-class health care available at Jackson than Commissioner Sally Hayman. Another sign for optimism is that our aviation industry is booming with a record of more than 38 million passengers traveling through MIA in 2011. And 2012 has started off with a bang too. On January 2nd, we set an all-time single-day record uh, with more than 135,000 passengers. And we're hungry for more. Commissioner Dennis Moss, I share your vis vision of bringing a world-class air show to Homestead Air Reserve Base. In fact, I had a chance to speak directly to President Obama about it just last week. And we'll continue to work to get the federal support we need to land that show. I'm also uh, committed to working with you, Commissioner Linda Bell, and Colonel Lindbergh uh, to expand uses at the base. As I mentioned our Air Reserve Base, as I mentioned our Air Reserve Base, let's recognize our military families for their continued service to our country. And I know that I speak for Commissioner Pepe Diaz and all commissioners when I say that our community appreciates your hard work and sacrifice. And between the airport and the seaport, international trade is alive and well in Miami-Dade County. Consider this. At MIA, freight shipments grew and matched their all-time record. And container traffic at Port Miami surged this past fiscal year. The 2035 Port Master Plan is charting a clear course for the future. And major infrastructure improvements happening right now at Port Miami are creating jobs and will only grow our international trade business. And I look forward to working with the Commission, and especially Commissioner Rebecca Sosa and Commissioner Bruno Barreiro, to ensure our vital economic engines continue to thrive. Let's not forget our other key industries. Tourism continues to be a bright spot and a job creator. The Greater Miami Conventions and Visitors Bureau is doing outstanding work. Miami-Dade County saw a record number of overnight visitors in 2011, who spent more than $19 billion in our community. 
helping to support 109,000 jobs, which is a 3% increase over the previous year. Our cruise traffic is going strong. For the fourth consecutive year, more than 4 million passengers pass through our seaport. That makes us number one in the world. But we're still not satisfied. This year, three new cruise lines have signed up to sail from Port Miami. Disney, MSC, and Regent Seven Seas will join our, our, our list. In addition, Carnival Cruise Line's newest ship, the Carnival Breeze, is coming to Port Miami. Imagine the positive impact that these ships will have on our community. Agriculture is alive and well in our community, too. Our farmers and ranchers work some 60,000 acres of land producing food that is served at dinner tables around the nation and creating a $2.7 billion annual economic impact in the process. And I join Senator Javier Soto in supporting this important sector of our community. As, Com as Commissioner Jean Monestin uh, constantly reminds us, small business continues to make up the bulk and the backbone of our local economy despite the challenging economic times. From family-owned restaurants to barber shops to courier services, our mom and pop businesses, our, it's our mom and pop businesses that make this community go. Our arts and cultural scene are also continue to thrive. Nonprofit arts and cultural businesses employ more than 22,000 people here locally and have a $1 billion annual impact on our community. We are, we are one of the world's newest and most dynamic cultural centers. Over 50,000 visitors came here just a couple of months ago for the 10th annual Arts Week Miami featuring Art Basel and 17 satellite art fairs. New science and art museums are rising on Biscayne Bay and History Miami is expanding as well. And, and in Miami's historic Overtown neighborhood, Dr. Dorothy Jenkins Fields is pushing the Black Archive Center towards completion and ensuring that a central part of our community's history is never forgotten. The One Community, One Goal initiative also places a high value on education and ensuring that we produce the educated workforce needed to fill the jobs that we aim to bring to our county. I have several educators in my family, including my wife Lourdes. She serves as a constant reminder to me of just how important educating our young people is. That's why I'm announcing today the formation of the Miami-Dade Education Partnership. Working in conjunction with South Florida Workforce, we are making a $1.5 million available to college students from disadvantaged communities throughout Miami-Dade. They can participate in paid internships with local businesses this summer. This partnership will provide local businesses the opportunity to have our bright young students work within their organizations. Connecting our students to our partners in the private and nonprofit sector is key to growing jobs and ending the brain drain of our most talented students leaving our community. That's why my administration will expand our current internship programs to include college students working closely with our highest county executives. Commissioner Barbara Jordan, I've known you've always championed South Florida workforce, and I look forward to working with you on these important efforts. <laughs> Supporting education is critical for our community. So let me take a moment to acknowledge our community education leaders who are here today, Miami-Dade College President Eduardo Padron, and FIU President Mark Rosenberg, and the other members of our educational community who are here today. <laughs> While job creation is my top priority, there is another critical task before us. Now it's the time for comprehensive county reform and continuing to restore the public trust. It's time to be bold 
It's time to do the right thing. First and foremost, I support placing eight-year term limits for commissioners on the November ballot. Primero que nada, mi ap yo apoyo los límites de, de término de ocho años para los comisionados en la boleta de noviembre. It's a vital reform that I have been pushing for since 2007 as a commissioner and an active member of the Charter Review Task Force. Our residents wanted term limits back then, and they want them now. Whether by citizen-initiated petition or the commission follows the lead of Commissioners Linda Bell and Rebecca Sosa and places the question on the November ballot, our voters have the right to decide term limits for commissioners once and for all. Nope. No conditions, no tricky language, just eight-year term limits, period. Next, I challenge the Commission to repeal the obstacles it placed on residents who are petitioning their county government. That includes the onerous one signature per page rule. Commissioner Steve Bobo, I applaud your efforts to push these reforms. The decks have been unfairly stacked against the people, so let's fix the petition process. We need more than just these important reforms. We need the Commission on Ethics and the Office of the Inspector General, the watchdogs who root out public waste, fraud, and corruption to be free of any political interference. In November, let's empower these fundamental institutions through our charter in order to make our county government more transparent. And as critical as job creation and economic growth are to our county, they cannot and will not come at the expense of our most treasured resource, the environment. Not on my watch. We need to protect our, urban, uh, our, our environment and put a lid on urban sprawl that chokes our roadways, overwhelms our schools, strains our limited resources, threatens our natural resources, and ultimately impacts our quality of life. We must protect and defend the urban development boundary. <laughs> Commissioner Javier Suarez is on the right path, but a moratorium is not enough. We need a new approach to controlling urban sprawl and protecting our environment. Change the charter to require that any movement of the current line must be approved by an extraordinary majority of the board as recommended by the Charter Review Task Force. Once and for all, this ensures that future commissions and future mayors have the strictest standards for making any changes to the line. <laughs> Chairman Joe Martinez, you are to be commended uh, for calling the meeting on March 8th uh, to discuss charter reforms. And I encourage you to expand our opportunities for the public to participate and share their thoughts on these proposed reforms and other pr proposed reforms that may come from the Commission. When I took the oath of office last July 1st, I pledged that I would work to restore trust in county government and lead us in a new direction. And I also assured our residents that my decisions will be guided by one fundamental principle, doing what is best for all of Miami-Dade County. Ladies and gentlemen, the state of Miami-Dade County is improving, and there's reason for cautious optimism in our community as we move towards a brighter future. Señores y señoras, el estado del condado está mejorando. In eight short months, you've seen the kinds of reforms that typically, typically take years to come, if they're even attempted at all. Cutting taxes, obtaining needed concessions from our labor unions, cutting government waste while maintaining vital services, shaking up the government, pushing for overdue reforms, and creating the conditions for my top priority, job creation. Let me say this. There's much more critical work to be done in the year ahead, and our responsibility to better the lives of our residents is too great to be derailed by politics. As leaders, let's set aside our differences and work for the good of all. It's no secret that this is an election year and the time for politics will come. 
But that day is not yet here. Thank you all for being, being here today, and thank you for entrusting me to lead to this great community. I look forward to serving as your mayor for many, many years to come. <laughs> Thank you. May God bless America. May God bless our state and our county. And may God bless each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Que Dios los bendiga a todos. Gracias. Thank you all for joining us today. Have a wonderful day.